Okay, welcome back to another video. So uh, last time I was giving some examples of computing uh, Galois groups associated to uh, field extensions. And uh, in this video, one of the main goals is gonna be to talk a little bit more about the intermediate uh, field structure of field extensions. Um, and in the last video, I mentioned we have this example of Q adjoined square root of two. And there was this question of, is there an intermediate subfield, a proper intermediate subfield in between Q adjoined square root of two and Q? So to help us answer that, um, I'm gonna give another fact from Galois theory. Um, again, I'm not uh, proving most of these facts just for the sake of time, but I would like to state them. Um, and that is this. So when you have a Galois extension, so this is an example of a Galois uh, extension, uh, the fact is that for each subgroup of the Galois group, uh, so you can either write it as G or um, Gal, uh, let's see. I wanna make this match what I was writing before. So Gal L over K. Uh, so for each subgroup of the Galois group, there is an intermediate field. So, and basically there's, there's an intermediate field between uh, L and K specifically. Um, and there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these. So uh, however many subgroups the Galois group has, that's exactly how many intermediate field extensions there are between the smaller field, which in this example is Q, and the larger field, which in this example was Q adjoined square root of two. Okay, and this includes the fields themselves. Uh, so like in this example, uh, Q adjoined square root of two is considered to be an intermediate field extension. It's just, you know, like the largest one. And then Q is the smallest one. And in this case, uh, remember that the Galois group, so when we had Q adjoined square root of two over Q, this is a Galois extension. And the Galois group was Z mod two Z. And uh, there's only two subgroups of Z mod 2Z, um, which is Z mod 2Z and then the subgroup that only contains the identity. So that actually tells you that there's only one, uh, or rather there's only two intermediate fields um, and they are exactly the ones that I wrote. Um, so this is called, uh, you can write FTGT for short, but it's the fundamental theorem of Galois theory. And it tells you that uh, there's actually an inclusion reversing bijection between these things. So if L is the largest field, and so up here I have L, and then down here I have K, and I think about there being intermediate fields, so there's a slightly smaller one, L1, and then dot, dot, dot. Maybe this is like LN. So if I have this chain of, of smaller and smaller intermediate field extensions, those uh, can be put into correspondence with larger and larger elements of the, or uh, subgroups rather, of the Galois group. Um, and it's to do with the intermediate fields that are fixed by the subgroups. Um, so the picture I always like to have in my head is that um, with the smallest field, I write G for the Galois group, and then for the largest field, I write E for the subgroup that only contains the identity. And this is inclusion reversing. So if these containments are going in this direction, then there are subgroups that actually go in this direction dot, 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 and here's Hn. And um, the larger the subgroup, the smaller the field that it fixes. So there are automorphisms in the Galois group. 
uh, the identity automorphism only leaves this field fixed, right? So this is the only field where it leaves every element completely fixed. And then H1 leaves the elements of L1 fixed and so on until Hn leaves the elements of Ln fixed, but not necessarily the elements of the, the larger fields. Um, so again, in this example, in the example I gave before, it's, it's like really straightforward. Um, so if we wanted to match this picture, you have Q adjoined square root of two, and then you have Q. And then in the Galois group, there's the entire Galois group, which is Z mod 2Z. Uh, and really this contains the identity and then it contains uh, sigma, which was the one that sort of conjugated the elements. And then here you have E. And uh, E, the identity fixes uh, every element of Q adjoined square root of two, but the automorphisms here don't fix every element of Q adjoined square root of two. So you can see that it's kind of like inclusion reversing. Um, but you can also do more complicated examples. So like the, the example that I did in the last video, um, I had, I think it was in the last video, I had Q adjoined square root of two I was the largest field. And then there was Q. And here we figured out that the uh, Galois group in this case was the Klein four group, V. Uh, so here it, it was a simpler group, but here it was the Klein four group. And um, if you know the structure of the Klein four group, this actually has significantly more subgroups. Uh, so it has, uh, you know, four elements, obviously. One of its subgroups is the identity and then there are, I think this is the right way to write this. So there's the subgroup generated by each of the different non-identity elements, right? So if you, uh, if you write the Klein four group, you can write this as, um, so one way to write it would be the identity. And then you have three other elements like this. And uh, so there's the subgroup generated by X, the subgroup generated by Y, the subgroup generated by Z. And these can be put into a lattice kind of like this. And um, so by what I said before, the by the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, you would expect that there should be a field here, a field here, and a field here. And the same thing, right? There should be a lattice going like this. And in this case, this does happen. One of the fields is Q adjoined square root of two. One of them is Q adjoined I. And one of them is Q adjoined square root of two I. Right, and these are the intermediate fields and their elements are each fixed by certain Galois automorphisms and not by other automorphisms. Um, and, you know, again, in the last video, we were explicit about what the Galois group was in this case. So what was the Galois group of Q adjoin square root of two I? So again, this contained the identity, uh, it contained sigma, it contained tau, and it contained sigma tau. And uh, if I recall, sigma was the one that uh, reversed the order of square root of two. So sigma sent uh, square root of two to negative square root of two. Uh, and tau was the one that sent i to negative i. And so using that, you can actually um, figure out which of these fields are fixed by uh, which of these different automorphisms. So you can kind of match these two lattices. Um, so I will leave you to think about that uh, a little bit more, but that's basically the idea. And uh, this is helpful because in principle, Galois theory, I mean, in, in the first couple of videos, we kind of started with the reverse thing, right? So we started with a field extension and we wanted to know about the automorphisms. And what you can kind of see here is that if you actually know about the automorphisms, if you know about the Galois group, 
uh, the reverse thing happens. You can figure out more things about the intermediate fields. And you can say things that uh, would otherwise be difficult to prove. Um, so yeah, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, in the last video, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the applications of Galois theory to other areas of pure mathematics, basically. And um, that's going to basically be the last thing that I wanted to talk about. So I will see you then.